What's up, y'all? This is a little bit different from your sneaker professor. Um, Arch-USA.com is the website. Please visit Bookmark it. Visit it often because I do write a lot of articles there. Um, this is not really a business analysis as much as it is. How many of you have heard of banded running? And this is not a live stream, so you can't answer me right now. But go into the comment and you know comment section and leave a comment and say yeah i heard of them before uh to be honest i had not heard of them um let's get to this because it's it's more of a personal commentary and it's going to show a side of track and field that is very personal to me i mean for obvious reasons once i get into this but the beauty of track and field is also the frustration of the sport. But banded running is a bomb. I ran my first 200 meter race this summer, 52 years old. I had to run against 32 year old. The race was placed in what's called the master's division because there weren't enough athletes signed up in that section. Now, this speaks to the fact that a lot of people don't realize that fitness, uh, track and field, is a lifestyle that you can carry until you die. You can run at a track and field event forever. They'll put you in the right category. I've been a hooper all of my life. I was a head basketball coach. I was a college recruiter for the game. When I ran that race, I felt incredible until I was at about 125 meters. You can see this here. I felt my hamstring tighten. It got super tight. It felt like it pulled. I was like, man, I really hope that's not ripped or anything else. But I finished the race. I didn't finish in the 20s as I had been during, you know, the practices with my athletes. I love basketball. But my daughter took the track and field. Now, when I was a head basketball coach, I would request my players to compete in different sports instead of immediately defaulting to spring and summer travel basketball. As a certified NFHS coach, I understood the issues with overuse. There's the Derrick Rose thing that I talked about on this channel before in regard to playing 80 games a year as a kid and then going into the NBA and getting injured almost to immediately and we see that so much now because guys are specializing in a sport so i'd have my guys compete and i'd have them compete in track and volleyball and while those sports are very similar to basketball in the physical aspects of jumping right the training is extremely different so at the time i learned both of those sports now, that training, it wouldn't become utilized in greater detail until this year. Now, over the last four years of my daughter participating in track and field from middle school, elementary, middle school, I would help with certain things, but I wasn't completely invested as a coach. I was a parent. When I moved from being a track and field parent, I actually got USATF certified in track and field and I became a head coach now in the past I've talked about it I owned a running shoe company arch was a running shoe company I didn't actively participate in running groups I did sponsor runners in marathons and different 5k's but I didn't participate in running groups because for me running groups were intimidating I'm not a small guy and you get out there with these super like small people who are running six miles at the beginning and you know they may have some slower people but it tends to be really you know people that are just really running a lot what i did when i had my shoe company is i worked my way up and i tested my own shoes i started running one mile and then i ended up at eight miles a day now, I needed to prove that my sneakers worked. My daughter was young at the time that I was doing this. That was back in 2012. So here, 12 years later, 
my life experience led to the creation of a track and field team that competed in the high school season and the summer season. And the kids I coached, when I ran that 200 meter that you just saw, they were proud of me finishing that race. But they knew something wasn't right because I slowed down. But they still felt pride. That sense of community that I had as a college player, as a high school head coach, as a college recruiter, I was the only coach of the 40 plus teams that were at that event who competed in the actual event. Now, I competed even after standing up for four hours to officiate the high jump for boys and girls. I know you guys are like, what does this have to do with banded running? I'm getting there. When I did compete, at the end of it, I felt relieved. Unfortunately, that pulled hamstring took me out of the rest of the master's events for the summer. I had been working like crazy to run three events. And just like that, I was relegated to coaching only. My track season was over. And now we get to where I'm headed. The hardships of finding a place to practice as a team, my team, that was lamented by almost every program in the region. Now, we're talking tri-state, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee. Every program in the region lamented the inability to practice. Running the high jump was a revelation of how poor the access to equipment is by young teams. Track is an amazing sport, but unlike road racing and just regular running, it requires access to the appropriate facilities. The amazing thing about the race that I did is had I done the impossible, and posted a low 20 second race, I expect it to be in about 28 second range, 28, 27 second range. If I had been in the low 20 seconds, I could have qualified for a professional event. I could have qualified. Track and field as a sport is the great equalizer. Track and field is possibly the last bastion of authentic love for the process in the major sports. In track, you can find events and compete. The times that you run in those events that you compete in are professionally tracked and can open you up to various opportunities. I'm explaining this because it's important to where we're headed. The opportunities, however, come at a price. Now, most cities lack public facilities to train. Everybody doesn't have a big track, high jump pit, long jump pit, with the brooms, pole vault, a discus area. Most facilities do not have these places for athletes to train, not even young athletes. You have to use a school and getting permission is extremely hard. It's hit or miss. For a person that's attempting to be a professional athlete, the expenses mount very fast. Interbanded running. And when we sit down and we look at banded running and what they've done is super interesting. Banded running is a bomb. This startup running brand based in New York mounted the second version of their marketing campaign, but I'm pretty sure you've never heard of it. So I ask again, have you heard of Bandit Running? Now, throughout the post that I've been reading here and I've been going through and discussing with you guys, throughout this post are images of unsponsored athletes. And these unsponsored athletes competed at this year's Olympic trials in track and field. Now, during the event, athletes could be seen rocking these all black kits. Interestingly enough, you looked at my video there, 
my team's uniforms were all black. Now, I joked with my wife about all black kids um, that we saw while streaming the event on Peacock. The difference was I got this really good deal from Nike on my team uniforms, and then I had to have them screen printed with our team logos. Now, the Nike swoosh, just like it is right now on my San Diego State shirt, was emblazoned across our shirts. We looked incredible, and Nike reaped the benefits of free advertisement as we competed throughout the summer. These are all of my kids wearing the same uniforms that I was wearing when I ran that event. We look like a Nike team. Now, my team was on YouTube. The logos weren't prominent and aren't prominent here on YouTube, other than what you see me wearing right now. Imagine being a struggling track and field pro, taking on the burden of flights, preparation, and then wearing a logo on your kit, providing hundreds of thousands of views for that brand on Peacock and on YouTube. Imagine knowing the guy beside you in the Nike kit is getting an additional $50,000 to cover some of the training cost. Imagine knowing an athlete like Noah Lyles might be getting upwards of $20 million from Adidas. You look at the video over to the side, and this is Banded Running talking about the process of what they've done. So I ask once again, have you heard of Banded running probably not now those black kits that were being worn in the trials were part of the unsponsored series from banded running you've seen the pictures throughout they're on the website when you go to the website and i'm letting that open just for effect no sponsor no problem trevor bassett Right. You sit down and you realize these other athletes are making all of this money. Now, here's the interesting thing. Banded running, according to craft.io, was founded with fourteen point two million dollars. This last week, they sponsored thirty five athletes with short term contracts to assist them with their journey to the Olympic trials. The brand created a documentary, which is what we were watching there. And this marketing tactic ended with Trevor Bassett earning a spot in the 400 meter hurdles. 35 athletes is $175,000 or almost 1.5% of the brand's total funding. That's a lot of money. I bring this up because Tracksmith did something very similar. It shouldn't be on the brands to save a professional sport. But this is where we all are when we discuss track and field. Banded running is offering a solution, but there has to be something better created for track and field. There have to be better facilities. There have to be better opportunities. This is a sport that has amazing potential. And I have to give a huge shout out to Banded Running for doing the unsponsored series. And that's what this video is for. It's an important thing, but the brand shouldn't have to carry all of the weight. What's the solution? I'm not sure. I appreciate you guys for listening. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one. It'll probably be more business related and less of me being emotional. Peace, y'all.